Okay, so a fifty-five-year-old woman with. So remember, read the question uh, first, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so uh, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Um, so, okay. fifty-five year old with type two diabetes presents. She has dyspnea, chest pain. She has hypoxemia, hypoxemia, nocturnal dyspnea. On examination, blood pressure is kind of high. Pulse to jugular vein suspension. And she has crackles and closes an S three gallop. Um. Okay, so as far as my thought process, so mm -hmm. kind of all over. It's not really like <clears throat> it's not really a, a linear progression. So, so I mean, the obviously I know what the biochem of proximal nocturnal dyspnea. It's like acidic, kind of induced and happens at night. But first thing I guess is JVD. So when I think of JVD, it, my first thing is thinking of like a uh, like right heart issue that's you know, pushing back and then causing, um, you know, JVD. Um, so like some kind of back, not backflow, but buildup. And okay. then, um, and then the, as far as the S3, so let me think S3, there's the S4, S3 is after S2. And I could, one of them is related to dilated cardiomyopathy and one's related to hypertrophic, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I, so I think I'm going to assume this is dilated, I believe. Yeah, so I guess let yes, and, and I guess that makes sense because of the backflow into the lung, causing like lung issue. I guess I, I know crackles is bad, so I assume it's backflow in there and then back there. So I guess left ventricular failure is the answer. Okay, final answer. Yes. Good. That's the answer. So let's let's work through this a little bit more linear. Okay. Yeah. I might got the answer, but I'm gonna try to get you to think more linear a little bit. So which is the following? Yeah, my cardio right now, yeah. my cardio right now is like I like no facts at different points. But yeah. I'm like trying to like what? So let, let's work through this together on a clinical standpoint, right? Most likely diagnosis, of course, right? You got an older woman, type 2 diabetes, emergency department. So she has an acute issue with sudden, you know, trouble breathing and chest pain. That's never good, right? Reports orthopnea and paranoctismal dyspnea. So when she's lying down flat, she can't breathe, right? Coughing a lot, right? Past few weeks. So it's a chronic thing, but now it's an acute thing. So we call that acute on chronic, meaning you have a chronic issue and it's gotten worse. Okay. On physical exam, she has high blood pressure. She's tachycardic. She has venous dissension. She has crackles. So in my mind, I'm already thinking, right, if you kind of go to the, um, you know, I always draw my cardiac diagram box here so that you, this is how I think of it, right? So you have your left ventricle here, your right ventricle here, right? What gives you crackles is that if you have, you know, left ventricular um, failure, left ventricular um, you know, either distinction or hypertrophy, but practically um, failure of it, right, or a heart, a left sided heart failure, it's going to back up and then flood the lungs. If it floods the lungs, then you're going to have all these symptoms, especially lying down, right? That's why you get crackles. You get pulmonary edema, you get crackles, right? And then also on top of that, you have jugular venous distension, meaning that happens when you have right sided heart failure, where it backs up to your um, your ju jugular vein, right? And so, you know, in your mind, you have left and right side of heart failure right now. Okay. And then you have an S3 gallop, which means it's, you know, dilated cardiomyopathy, right? Which causes that S3. And S4 is usually by caused by left ventricular hypertrophy, which is a stiffened left ventricle. So, you know, it's probably a left-sided heart failure that led to right-sided heart failure. And it's an right. acute exacerbation, right? So it's an acute exacerbation of, congestive heart failure does it make sense so that's how you work through it logically like in a linear fashion so which and you started more with what was your initial fact like I, I know your chart and i know you said like how it got to right but you started in the left as a backflow so yeah. does that mean you started with s3 
Yep. So, so when you're working through this, right, remember the most common cause of right side of heart failure is left side of heart failure, right? So oh, I already knew right. that the patient had left sided because she had, you know, this woman has symptoms of orthopnea and paranoctismal dysmia and also lung crackles, right? So, you know, if you have lung symptoms, then you know it's a left side of heart failure. Okay. Right. What about the <laughs> orthopnea and the dyspnea? Yeah. Orthopnea means, you know, kind of orthopnea, paranoctismal dysmia, or you can't breathe throughout the night when you're uh, lying down. And that's because, right, remember, when you're lying down, right, your lungs are being flooded with the fluid, right? When you're standing up, right, the fluid is kind of on the bottom, but then the fluid redistributes when you're lying flat, right? That's why patients that have left side of heart failure, they can't lie down flat. They have to lie down on an incline, right? Like with pillows, right? When you have a, uh, and this is one concept that I, I try to understand, I, I is a pleural effusion so that's happening as a result of like connect like if you have a heart problem does that yeah. cause a buildup of like does that re relate to pleural effusion yeah yeah so if you think about it right so let's say give you know let's try to draw this again so let's talk about left your left ventricle okay if it's not working right the pressure right meaning that it's not pumping out your you know, you, you know if this is your aorta right and then you know here's your pulmonary veins coming back to the heart well if it's if blood is not being pumped forward then pressure is building up backwards right and if you have pressure that's built up backwards then you know the blood supply of the lung cannot push forward into the left atrium right so if that's the issue what's going to end up happening is fluid or serous fluid, meaning, you know, transudate, not exudate, not like frank blood, but like your plasma is going to leak out of kind of, remember the, the, the complex between your alveoli, right? And your capillaries, right? It's a very thin layer, right? And so if the fluid right. leaks out, it's going to go into your alveolus and things like that, right? And so you have some, you know, fluid stuck into your alveolar sac causing, you know, pulmonary edema, things like that. So then it's hard <clears> to <throat> breathe, right? So... Mm -hmm. And and so I understand capillary flow like it like they they go from uh, like all the way from arteries and then down in the capillaries they they switch and then uh, but I I remember the I'm trying to remember the relationship between like pleural effu pleural effusion and like lymphatics like I I get that there's you know in the GI there's going to be you know lymphatics there and then it takes it somewhere but I'm trying to remember the relationship between like when this pleural effusion is is that effusion relationship the same as like capillary going from like a bed of like arterial kind of to venous? Yeah, so it's like very it similar. Something? It's a similar concept, right? I mean, just on a different system. But if you talk about, for instance, like, you know, I always draw this diagram here. So you have your arterioles that goes to your capillaries that go to your venules, right? And in your capillaries, you have your endothelium layer that's very, very thin, which allows things to leak in and out, right? If, you know, if you think about muscles here, or in this sense, this could be, you know, you know, your alveoli, right? It's some kind of organ, right? That's where the, the exchange of, you know, oxygen and blood supply is uh, created, right? And so if you give you an example, right, this goes back to kind of the whole left side of heart failure. If your left heart is somewhere over here and it's blocked, the pressure builds up backwards and fluid wants to seep out of your capillaries. Okay. If fluid seep out into your capillaries, it's going to end up in your alveoli, right? Or around okay. your lung, and one or the other, right? Your interstitial or your alveoli, meaning that you're going to get like pulmonary edema, right? AKA crackles. Yeah. But normally, like when those that fluid leaves the capillaries, I assume it's what uptaken by lymphatics. It's not Is all that the, time. the the yeah, I mean yeah, the lymphatics. If you think about it, it, run in complete opposite of the capillaries, right? So you know, if you have your lymphatics here, right? So your lymphatics is a gutter system. Okay, it has a constant flow. So let's just say you know it drains out. I mean, just throw out a number here. It drains out two mLs of fluid, right, per, I don't know, let's just say per minute, right? In constant hemostasis, I mean, in uh, homeostasis, when you're dealing with, you know, fluid in the interstitium, the interstitium just means in this space between, you know, between um, either muscle, alveoli, et cetera, right? Interstitial just means with, with outside the vessels or the main organs. So 
if me and you are healthy and we have no issue, then, you know, whatever leaks out of the capillaries will just be sucked in by the lymphatics. Okay. But it's a gutter system. It's a passive gutter system. It's, it's at a constant rate. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm making it simplified because it, it does have a cap. It, it, it can go up in rate, but it has a cap. So once you've, you've, um, once you've leaked out too much fluid, right through the capillaries and you, um, what is it called? You over, um, how do I say this? Um, you like over too much hydrostatic pressure. Yeah, no, you over saturate yeah. your gutter system. Right. So for instance, like, I mean, giving you an example of, you know, um, our sewer system, right? If it rains for like hours straight, it no longer works well, right? It starts flooding the streets, right? It's the same way when you're dealing right. with lymphatics. If you've oversaturated how much the lymphatics can, then fluid starts building in the interstitial space. <clears throat> so that's okay. going to so, be if you add that into that. Yeah. So like, and let's just say this is in the heart or, or I guess like a, or how would how would this like the system with the artery capillary vein relate to like pleural effusion you're saying that where would this arterial system be at like in the pleura or something like yeah yeah it, the, like when you're talking about pleural effusion right like i said right so using the same system right going to arterioles to capillaries to venules right and you know in this particular instance right you know the alveoli is something like this, right? If you're talking about the alveoli, right? And so if you have left side of heart failure, just imagine there's a big blockage here. So pressure is going to make fluid leak out into the interstitial space. Interstitial means the, you know, the, the, um, the lung parenchyma is a special word. It just means lung tissue that's not within the alveoli. So some of it's going to leak out here. Some of it's going to leak within the alveoli. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was the alveoli you drew there. Yeah, this uh, is the alveoli yeah. right here. But yeah. then some of it seeps seeps out into the parenchyma. Yeah. So it, when when there's increased pleural fusion, is that build up in the? Uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of like it, it. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so pleural fusion, I, I just put it all together. Like it, it's some in the alveoli, some in the parenchyma. But remember, pleural fusion is just kind of like here's the pleura, right? That surrounds the lung. It's just kind of you know fluid here right fluid that is around the lung right and within the lung right so it kind of seeps so yeah. within within not only in that cavity at the bottom of the cavity but also like within the lung technically that's where it's yeah coming yeah coming from yeah seeping from like you said okay yeah the seepage gotcha. of kind of the, yeah the pressure right the fluid pressure that's seeping out so yeah gotcha all right, man. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. I, I was always trying to connect that concept. So. For sure. For sure.